Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T, and if true crime is your jam, and like me, you enjoy delving into unsolved cases, trying to figure out who done it, please consider subscribing. Also, if you enjoy my videos, please hit that like button. Chris McDonough of The Interview Room spoke at length about Summer Wells' grandmother, 61-year-old Candy Har, in his last live. He described her as a con woman and a good one at that. Chris stated that Candy Har has five AKAs. One of those is obviously Candace C. Har, her birth name. The second AKA is Candace C. Bly, which was her name after she married Kenneth Bly, her ex-husband and the father of her three daughters, Candace, Jeannie, and Rosemary. So what are the other three AKAs and why would she have used them? I looked at a Truth Finder report on her, but it only had her maiden name and her married name. I think the other AKAs are riffs off these other two names, as in things like Candy Har, Candy Bly, etc. Do those tell us anything about Candy Hare's character? Was she trying to hide her true identity at different times in her life? Possibly. Chris also mentioned that Harer's past includes at least one charge of child endangerment. When a little girl goes missing on a day when she is in the care of her mother and her grandmother, and the grandmother has been previously charged with child endangerment, I would think that would be critical information to know. And I would also think that a mother with a five-year-old little girl would not want to have someone who's been charged with child endangerment around her. Why wasn't Candace concerned about her being around Summer and the boys? Is that child endangerment charge the reason why Candy Har is not allowed to spend time with her grandchildren in Wisconsin, her daughter Jeannie's children. The way it was explained to me is that Jeannie's husband told his wife that he didn't want their kids around her mother, Candy Har. I got the feeling that it was a, it's either me or your mother type of situation for Jeannie. Why Jeannie's husband feels that way about Candy Har is unclear. Is it because of these alleged child endangerment charges? Is it because Candy Har abandoned Jeannie and her two sisters when they were adolescents? Is it because he knows that Har is a con woman and that she brings trouble with her wherever she goes? I'd love to ask Jeannie and her husband Jeremy why they don't want their kids around Har, but neither one of them seems willing to talk. They are deliberately staying under the radar for the obvious reasons, but it would be helpful to hear what they know about Candy Har. I feel that Jeannie's input is a huge missing piece of the puzzle. Candy Harer also has two grandchildren from her missing daughter, Rosemary Bly, grandchildren that she also doesn't spend time with or see. Rose's husband, Chris Larson, has said that he told Harer that she either has to be a regular participant in his kids' lives or stay away from them completely. Har seems to have chosen to stay away completely. That to me supports what Chris McDonough said about Candy Har being beyond feeling, being cold as ice. If you had a missing child who left behind two little girls, wouldn't you cling to those babies? I mean, they are in a sense all that is left of Rosemary. Wouldn't you want to express your love for your missing daughter by loving and nurturing her children? I would. You might even see your missing daughter in her daughter's faces, which I would think would be an incredible comfort. Why doesn't Har want to be around her granddaughters? 
Chris McDonough also brought up H's statement about Candy Har on June 15th when he said that Har was out of her mind. H never really explained away that statement. He said something like, well, all grandmas are grumpy. I think H was leaving a lot out in this instance. I think there's more to her being out of her mind that day, but H didn't want to tell us. Is the chaos we see in the photo of Summer in the back seat of Har's Silverado a result of Har being out of her mind that day? The Skittles that H said Grandis bought for Summer were scattered across the seat as if someone ripped the package open in a rush. And why weren't the Skittles eaten? Summer hadn't been given much to eat that day from what we know, aside from a slushy. Would she have been hungry? You'd think she would have gobbled those Skittles right up. The orange soda was lying there too. It's not set in a cup holder, as most people would do. I know people who have kids often have messy cars, where the remnants of snacks can be found. But in this case, I would think the child would have consumed the snack. Now I'm wondering if those Skittles were staged back there to support the script. I say this because several people in the case have stated that Summer's favorite candies were peppermints, either Tic Tacs or those big peppermint balls that are slightly soft. In fact, I believe Jose Roman said that Summer once almost choked on a peppermint ball candy, and so they started crushing them up before they gave them to her. Candice, Grandis, Don, and Jose all said Summer's favorite candies were peppermints. The person in the family who likes Skittles is Candace Bly. Remember when Chris McDonough asked Candace what flavor vape she bought? After a pause, Candace replied, Skittles, because that's my favorite flavor. Why would Grandis buy summer Skittles if her favorite candies were peppermints? I think those Skittles were Candace's, not Summer's. So now, why were the Skittles scattered on the back seat next to the orange soda bottle? Was Summer eating the Skittles and someone got mad and knocked them out of her hand? That's one possibility. Was Summer eating them and then fell asleep and somehow they ended up falling out of the package onto the seat? Maybe, but not likely. Or were the Skittles sprinkled on the back seat and the orange soda placed there to make it look like Summer had been back there, alive and well, eating candy and having a fun day. Remember, Candace Bly said that Grandis gets mad if the kids get the car messed up and the seats wet, and that's why Summer was sitting on a pillow. Would Grandis be okay with sticky candies messing up the truck's back seat like that? The Skittles would have been wet from H sitting back there in his wet shorts. He said he went in the water to grab Summer when she went under the surface. Thus, his shorts had to have been wet at least when he first got into the truck after the fishing hole. He never mentions sitting on a pillow. If we consider the surroundings outside Grandis's trailer, the appearance of the 11 acres at 110 Ben Hill Road, and the inside of the Wells home, we have to conclude that neither Candace nor Grandis had a problem with messiness. Nothing at 110 Ben Hill Road looks neat, clean, or proper. So was that bit about the pillow mean under summer because she was wet a lie? Does Grandis really care if her truck interior is messy? I don't think so. I'm leaning toward that whole pillow bit being a lie because we can see that they changed Summer into a dry outfit. That would have solved the wet suit problem. And H would have also been wet from going into the water too. He wasn't sitting on a pillow from what I understand. That whole story about the pillow makes no sense and is contradicted by H being in the truck wet. And while I'm on the subject of messiness, I also think that Grandis and Candace planting flowers 
or more accurately, cacti, doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. Do they really care about embellishing the Wells property when the whole place looks like a junkyard thanks to all the abandoned cars, the school bus, metal containers, old generators and refrigerators? I don't think planting cacti or flower would have been important to anyone living there. Thus, I think the planting of flowers story is also all made up. An activity brought into the Wells script to fill out the afternoon hours of June 15th. This is part of their alibi in a way. Candace Grandis and Don had to fill in the lost afternoon hours of June 15th, hours from 3.30 p.m. to about 6 p.m., the period during which summer vanished. In his live, Chris McDonough seemed to be implying that Grandis might have played a role in Summer's disappearance. What do you guys think? Did Grandis lose her temper that day? Was her knee pain gnawing at her and putting her in a foul mood? Were the knee pain and foul mood made all the worse because of the heat and humidity of the June day, the long appointment at the Holston Medical Center? the long line in the Walgreens drive through the 35 plus minutes waiting for the prescription to be filled, the inebriated state in which she found Candace and H after they drank the twisted tea and enjoyed the vapes. Could all of these factors have exhausted any patience Candy Harr had that day? Could she have erupted in a fit of anger and hurt Summer in the process. That's a definite possibility in my opinion. We cannot let Har off the hook just because she's a grandmother. Sadly, Candy Har is not the sweet little grandmother who bakes cookies of all our dreams and of Summer's dreams. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories. Now do me a favor, please hit that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe, and if you want to support my channel, you can do so right down there in the comments.